is that the Secretary of State had issued a license in this person's name to this individual at a certain address with a certain birth date. Correct? Yes, sir. In other words, the objective information that you got from your lien run was that this man with this license and this name was allowed to drive in the state of Michigan on this date. Correct? That's what a fraudulent obtained license is. Hold on. Is. I didn't ask you that. I just want you to answer my question. I know what you want to tell Mr. Polanco. Just answer mine. Okay? The, the, the actual Secretary of State lien run that you showed was that he was lawfully allowed to drive. Correct? Under that identity, yes. Okay. And once you ran all this stuff on the computer, you returned to the police car or to his, excuse me, to the Mr. Uh, Jordan's car and you engaged him in no colloquy, no discussion. Isn't that right? Essentially, that's correct. You didn't ask him any questions about any of that. That is correct. You just arrested him. That's correct. So the entire investigation arrest sequence lasted approximately four to five minutes. True? Ballpark. And it's at that point that Mr. Jordan was removed from the car. You began your arrest or detention procedure, correct? Correct. Would you agree with me that at that point, Mr. Jordan was not free to leave, that he was being detained by you? That's why he was in handcuffs. Okay. What you just said about how long it took and what you did, Mr. Jordan, that's not entirely true, is it, Trooper Kaiser? I don't understand your question. Well, when you returned to Mr. Jordan's car, from having done your lien run, you actually started to, you swore at him, didn't you? No, sir. Didn't you say to him, who the F are you? No, sir. Didn't you press him about what he was doing and you wanted to get to the bottom of it and you were going to? Didn't you do that? Judge, if I can, I think this is outside the scope of my redirect. I and mean, this is basically the whole line across. You know what? Um, it, it, there's, I, I, it may be true. I, I have discretion. I, I want to get, let's get all sure. the facts out. This is really the whole key to this situation okay isn't it a fact that you actually continued to press mr mr jordan about details and whatnot for approximately 45 minutes from the time that you stopped him until you actually made the decision to arrest him and to call for a tow absolutely. isn't that true absolutely you called for a tow, would you not agree at, and I mean a tow, like your decision to impound his car, you did do that, didn't you? Yes, sir. And you made the decision to, there was no one there for to take over his vehicle once you arrested him, correct? Uh, I would have stood by for the tow truck, but Trooper Milhouse arrived. Okay. Have you looked at the report, by the way, to answer the question I asked before about Trooper Milhouse? No, you've been kind of long-winded, Council. I haven't had an opportunity. Give me a moment. Sure. And you can berate me, and it's okay by me. No, no, problem. Ever said, no one's ever said that about you. No, they have. <laughs> well, it won't be the first time. I also won't have. Last. Won't be the last. <laughs> won't be the last time that I've. This won't be the last time that I've also cross examined a police officer who has wit and charm. <laughs> That's a compliment, Trooper. Thank you. Not for me, from him. Don't thank him. All right. I don't see that recorded in the documents you've provided me, Council. Well, let's, I don't want the record to suggest that I've, that something else that, that I haven't given you. Uh, is there something else that has your name on it that you have made part of your official report? What's that? Yeah, there is. I'm Nothing sure. that I've ever gotten in this case, because we had to track her down like the Dickens. We had to actually pay someone to go try to track her down and subpoena her. Um, 
Yeah, please, Your Honor. That'd be great. Thanks, sir. You're right. You're right. You're right. That's how it was Davenport. Would you, Mr. Blanco was looking for the document where you referenced Trooper Milhouse as your backup officer. Already conceded. Yeah, it doesn't. That, I, it's not there. Is I, it? I misspoke about a different trooper. Sorry. I apologize. You completely omitted her from your report. Isn't that true? Structurally, yes, sir. Okay. I have no clue what that means. Structurally, do you mean that you didn't mention that you that the Burnett and Millhouse actually played an official role in this case in one in some capacity or other? Is that what you mean by that? She played no part in the arrest sequence and criminal proceeding of this case. I just want to know whether or not, you said structurally, do you mean that in the entire body of this police report that you did not reference Trooper Milhouse having played any role? Uh, she should be listed on the uh, vehicle form, but I'm not seeing it in the stack of documents you gave me. Is there some documents? I want to be clear that I've given you a packet that contains an investigation that spanned what looks like a couple of years. Yes, sir. I don't, I don't see the document in there. Trooper Milhouse, you, you didn't even reference that you even had a backup officer that day. Isn't that true? I'm sure I mentioned it in our prior court proceedings, but I don't I'm, see it in our report, sir. I, I know. I, I, just because I questioned you about it. I'm talking about, you know that I have, to, I'm talking about what you wrote in your report, not what you're answering to my questions. I just want to know, would you concur that her, either that or Mr. Polanco, would you concur that you, she's omitted entirely from your report? As I've said, I don't see her memorialized in the report. Okay. <clears throat> and if you arrested Mr. Jordan, within four minutes or five minutes of your having stopped him, which is what you testified to, you didn't call for backup or for um, a tow operator to come do anything with his car until what well, looks like about 10.30 or so. Do you dispute that? Did no, you? I wouldn't dispute that. So you actually had this man alone at the scene with just you, you're saying he's been under arrest for about 45 minutes or so from the time, is that right? Including the time I stopped him, our conversation, computer checks, searching the vehicle prior to impounding it and requesting a hook, that was probably about 40 minutes. Well, the policy actually, the state police policy about searching the vehicle pursuant to impound is that you actually have to have the impound operator actually sign off on the contents of the vehicle, isn't that true? Yes, sir. Well, you just said you searched the vehicle before you even called for impound. That's right. So you did the search without even having the person who's going to take the car actually even look through the contents to verify their, that what you say you found is what you found. True? Uh, is that true? Please rephrase that. You say that during the 45 minutes or so that you searched through this car, that you did it without the impound or tow operator even being there. That's correct. So you couldn't have followed the state police policy which says that you're supposed to have a tow operator actually observe what it is that you found during the search of the car so that the accused belongings can be properly chronicled. Correct? That is incorrect. Okay. So, so you have Mr. Jordan who said and during that 40 minutes or so from the time that he was arrested until the time that you called for this, this tow company to come. You're saying you didn't ask him any questions at all. You didn't berate him. You didn't press him about who he was. I was busy searching the car. Upon arrest, he was inquiring to me what this was all about. And I told him I did not believe the identity he provided was true. And I placed him in my patrol car. And I, where is that in your police report? Where is that colloquy in your report, Trooper? Where's any of that? Go ahead. You got the whole report there. Look through it. Find the spot where you said that you, he questioned you about that and you gauge in that colloquy. Sir, it wasn't a question to him, nor a response to one of my questions. So I understand I that. But you didn't, this is, a, this is a statement by an accused you're claiming made a statement to at the scene. Where is that statement referenced in your report? Would you agree that it's not? Absolutely it is not. 
defiantly that it's not. There's, you know it's not. Correct. So you have an accused that's asking you questions about reasons why he's being stopped, and you just omit that entirely. You can ask it 10 different times, counsel. The answer is going to be okay. no. Wait for a question. Now, you testified that as you were in your that this discussion with Mr. Jordan, where you had going through the belongings in his wallet and whatnot, and you hold up this Sam's Club card, that you say that that took place in your patrol car. That's correct. You know, I thought we were limiting this we are. I, to, the, to the basis for the arrest. I did too, okay. Your Honor. Yeah, okay. We are, Judge. He annoys me sometimes, too. He, he must get paid by the word, Your Honor. <laughs> I, you know what's interesting is I thought the same thing about you, Trooper Kaiser. <laughs> I thought that's you got paid by the word. Cod quits. <laughs> okay. That's enough. Would you just, and I'm just going to hand you what we've previously marked as Defendant's Exhibit E, just to corroborate what I've said about the tow records and when the tow truck was called. Would you, have you seen those before? No, sir. Is that the tow company that you called? It appears to be. I, but the tow company that responded? I have no uh, independent knowledge of their records or process keeping, so I, it's paperwork with their name on it. It's all I can tell you. Okay. I don't know. Judge, I'm going to move for its admission under 104B. I don't know if Mr. Polanco has an objection. Otherwise, we've attempted. What's the relevance? It's just to show how long, Mr. Mr. When the trooper actually called for a for a, a record, it shows 10:30. I don't yeah, know. But it's again, it's it's it's. I understand. It's, yeah, maybe you know credibility or whatever it is, but we're really down to, um, you've got a, a traffic stop. You guess you know you're not going to argue that you shouldn't ask for a license. He gets a license. It appears to be a valid license. He's got suspicions because of the age, and his special knowledge of, of when it would have been. You know, that would have been the first license issued to that person. He went to the car, ran a lien. He didn't see um, that he was, you know, just got out of jail or prison or anything from another state. And that when he asked him, um, have you had any prior, you know, traffic, he said he had a couple of tickets, but couldn't say when. That's basically all the facts that, I, that you have to determine right. what or what didn't happen. I understand. In other I, words, from a legal standpoint. I don't have any I questions. really have no idea whether at the moment that's enough for probable cause. I any have other questions? No. All right. Oh, Thanks, Dr. Green. I'll say. Thank you, Your Honor. Give it, back. Give it to Mr. Polanco. All right. Do you have any other witnesses? People have no, no other witnesses, Your Honor. Could you give me about five minutes just to talk to my client? And his, okay. Just to kind of make it okay. sure. Sure. Yeah. Thank you. No problem.